afternoon. Today is Wednesday, June 9th, and today is a beautiful day. My name is Kylie. Here are today's afternoon reports. A local idiot planted money trees in the hopes of accumulating wealth. Corruption in Bruce County as Wyerton Willie faces controversy, and a family was victim to a traumatic home invasion. We'll tell you more on that, but now we have the weather with our resident meteorologist, Tim Tidalwave. Thank you, News Desk. Now moving on to your five-day forecast. As you can see here for your five-day forecast, for most of your week, temperatures are in the mid-twenties, and for your overnights, it will be going down to lows 10 to 15 degrees. What's that? Oh boy. Looks like you're going to need an umbrella when you step out of the house because a huge storm system is moving in from Texas and moving into Ontario. It is raining Volkswagen sized hail down. Now, I would highly advise you to seek shelter immediately. Not like that's going to help. Anyway. Now, Moving back to our five-day forecast, we can see that the temperatures keep fluctuating to highs of 30 degrees and for your overnights, a low of 2 degrees every day. So, dress warm if you wish to step outside. We're also trying to keep track of a, of a few different storm systems moving into different parts of Canada, which are definitely causing us these headaches. And it looks like another storm system is moved over Nova Scotia, and it is raining cats, dogs, and lobsters over there, which is causing the sea levels to rise. Oh my goodness. I have just received a few reports saying that a major earthquake has just struck BC, and which split open the Cascadia fault line, and now BC is floating away. Now, back to our five day forecast which is now turned into a one-day forecast to signify that it's the end of the world. So say your prayers now, folks, because today we have a 99.99% .99 chance of death. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Tim. And now moving on. Chad Tyler was a believer in a very dumb, stupid idea that you can grow money out of the ground. So he set off to do just that one year ago. I originally got this idea from one of my friends, and ever since then, I've just been waiting for it to work, because it seems like the type of thing that's going to make me a lot of money. We also spoke to friends of Chad to hear and see how they feel about this decision. Yeah, I don't know what he's talking about, but I know that none of us are dumb enough to recommend something like this. I mean, looking at him sitting in a forest all day, waiting for something that will never come. I kind of feel bad for him, but at the same time, it's sort of a stupid thing to do. So just how much money have you planted in this one year? About $5,000, give or take. I know I can still take out loans and plant more money because I know the returns are going to be huge. The news team also has reached out to relatives of Chad to see how they are feeling about this. He was a pretty good kid in school, but waiting a year for this. I almost am just in disbelief at how stupid this is. Money doesn't fall from trees. I have another relative who photocopies money, spending so much money on paper and toner, so I just don't get it. What idiots they are. And now, Chad will wait until the day that will never come where a single $5 bill will fall out of a tree. Although the idea is very stupid, the dedication is somewhat admirable. Back to you. That was one of the dumbest things I've heard in my entire career. What a stupid guy. We appear to be getting breaking news from the Scarborough Bluffs. This just in, a Bigfoot has been sighted at the Scarborough Bluffs early this morning by a group of hikers. Witnesses said that the creature looked to be seven feet tall and was quite luggish. Joining us now is cryptozoologist Patty Peterson. Now Patty, what can you tell us about this creature? Well, these creatures tend to dwell in trees and are nocturnal. So finding one at this type of time of day is quite difficult. I see. Is there anything you can tell us about their temperament? Should anyone be afraid of this beast? Well, if you suspect one to be in the area, you'll see the signs. Broken trees, Swedish berry wrappers, uh, a nest in the tree. Those are signs that you should leave immediately, as they are dangerous and hostile to humans. Quite an event. Now over to our sports analyst, Sam Wilson. Welcome to sports. I'm Sam Wilson. 
Today in basketball news, LeBron James, considered by children to be the greatest basketball player of all time, has come out publicly to admit that Michael Jordan is the better man. The official LeBron James Instagram account number two made a post stating, I suck at basketball. Michael Jordan is goat. Michael Jordan ain't struggling with his hairline like me. I can't be the greatest if I don't look the greatest. MJ is a greater icon than me. I've never heard someone say, oh no, someone stole my LeBrons. I have heard someone say, oh no, someone stole my J's. My shoes aren't good enough to be stolen. LeBron makes his final point with, MJ was great on the court and a gambling addict. I can't match that kind of dedication. There we have it folks, the post to end all debate. Even LeBron admits he's no match for MJ. It is clear that MJ is the greatest basketball player of all time. Oh, I almost forgot. In other sports news, Blue Jays suck. Soccer is dead. Nobody cares about baseball. And the Maple Leafs are the best, despite decades of evidence to the contrary. Thank you, Sam, for the very reliable report. Moving on. Big news in a small town is our small friend, Wyrton Willie, is being accused of corruption. Bringing you the story is one of our on-scene reporters. Thanks, Aiden. The last few days have been a very harrowing time for the residents of Wyrton, Ontario. Apart from the annual Groundhog Day festivities, not much happens in this small town. That all changed when the Wyrton Police Force began an investigation into the town's most treasured resident, Wyrton Willie. On Monday, the Wharton Police Force started receiving anonymous tips accusing the Groundhog of accepting bribes. This sparked an investigation that has so far uncovered a possible connection between Wharton Willie and the Rosalia family. The Rosalia family name has been connected to numerous criminal investigations in the past, including Easter Bunny Gate in 2015. To help provide some insight into the situation, we managed to interview an employee of the Wharton Willie Festival. This person has agreed to be interviewed on the condition of remaining anonymous. So could you tell us what you saw at the festival? Uh, yeah. I was just closing down my popcorn stand when I saw something shady going on down in the park. Can you tell what it was? Yeah, I got a bit closer and I saw Tony Rosalia giving something to the little furry guy. Do you think it was money? Oh, no doubt about it. i never seen a groundhog look that happy before. Before you go, is there anything you'd like to say about the current situation? Yeah, I just want to say the whole town's really hurting right now, you know? Willie's been making predictions since 1957, and in all those years, he's never done something quite like this. We were proud of him, but now we're just disappointed. Thanks for sharing your story. I know it's a hard thing to talk about. Hey, thanks for having me. You have a good one. In response to the town's outrage, Willie has made a public statement addressing the allegations. That was Willie's statement to the local Wharton media on Monday night. In spite of Willie's denial of any wrongdoing, many are calling for Willie's resignation with hashtag cancel Willie trending on social media. A lawyer for Mr. Rosalia also spoke with the press. At this time, Mr. Rosalia would like to state that I didn't do nothing with no groundhogs. Capiche? All of his dealings with the groundhogs were strictly legal and no money exchanged hands between him and Wharton Willie. The Rosalia family would also like to request media distance for the next few weeks. Thank you. You are the man. Get out of here! No hearing dates have been set yet as the police continue their investigation, but we'll be following this story as it unfolds. From Warrington, Ontario, I'm Ravi Butler. Back to you in the studio. Thank you. We are now moving on to our news in business specialist, Chris Hastings. Thank you. Chris Hastings here. Today, we will be looking at the ongoing impact the stay-at-home order is having on businesses and stock market. Everyone is shopping online, so there's no surprise that Amazon stock is skyrocketing. With reports of massive revenue earnings, share prices have gone up 44%, and they've made $8 billion in just the first quarter. I was thinking, what are people buying? But then I remember all of the influencers doing haul on their social media accounts, Shilling for the corporate overloads, convincing the rest of us to waste our money on things we don't need, like all that tie-dye from 2020. Tim Hortons has seen a drop in revenue this quarter. Their sales rely on people going to places like work and school, and those people in the morning need coffee. A spokesperson for the company has announced that they intend 
to reintroduce nicotine into their coffee to boost customer reliance on their product. Let's get into stocks. They've been hard to keep up with, just like Khloe Kardashian's Photoshop fails. The trend has been high, the Dow Jones and the TSX are on winning streaks. Speaking as if I know what I'm talking about. But Dow Jones is on an 8-day winning streak and has 6 records high. The TSX is also on a 7-day winning streak with record highs. If we look at this chart, we can see it represents something. The line, the blue line, is going crazy, which I think is a good thing because it's high. Thank you. That's all for business news today. Back to you. Thank you, Chris. Very insightful. We're getting where there has been some developments with our Bigfoot story. We now go back to the bluff with our on-scene reporter. Hello, Aiden. I am on scene now at the Scarborough Bluffs, where there have been recent sightings of Bigfoot. With me now is one of these so-called believers. Philly, what can you tell us about these sightings? Well, uh, we've basically been setting up traps to try to catch him or something, and we've been trying to lure him out with berries, but um, no luck so far. But um, we figured he's nocturnal, so um, we've been trying to uh, contact him in his language. but um, still haven't had any luck. Thank you so much. Back to you, Aiden. Thank you, Jackie. We will continue to have updates on this groundbreaking story. Our next story, a home invasion in Scarborough occurred today where the suspect was reported to not be wearing a mask. Thank you, anchors. I'm Lauren Marshall, and I'm currently outside of the house where this vulgar scene took place late last night. Last night at 12 a.m., the Smiths were lounging in the comfort of their own home when all of a sudden, a man with no mask, face guard, bandana, or gloves was seen breaking in through their front window. The mother of this family, Victoria Smith, was quick with her actions to protect her children. She immediately pulled out her phone and began recording a TikTok, quote, exposing and canceling, unquote, him. Hey, get out of my house or put a mask on! How dare you come into my home without a mask? I'm just trying to rob your house. Leave me alone. The TikTok has since gone viral with over 4 million views and 2 million likes. It is also trending on Twitter under hashtag don't rob me unless masked. I interviewed Mrs. Smith a few hours ago. We asked her, Mrs. Smith, can you tell us what it was like when this man without a mask broke into your home? Well, there I was, sitting on my couch, right over there, just minding my own business, watching my favorite TV show with my husband, when all of a sudden this man came into my house and he wasn't wearing a mask right through the window. And I thought to myself, how dare this man come into my home and expose my children to COVID-19? I was appalled. So I did what any good mother would do, and I took out my phone and I started to record him. I thought, I'm gonna cancel this type of behavior. No one's gonna come into my home without a mask and try to rob my house without a mask. So that's what I did and I was really upset, but now I feel really great. Thank you for that inspiring story, Mrs. Smith. The man without a mask has since been found to be Jeff Brown and is currently detained and facing charges. He has since been found to be a part of an anti-vaccination Facebook group called Home Invaders and Spotty Invasions. He's also the creator of a GoFundMe, raising money for criminals who have been put out of business due to the pandemic. So if anyone has a few dollars laying around, be sure to check it out. I'm Lauren Marshall, and this is Channel 32 News. Thank you for the coverage, Lauren. And next up, we have our segment of panelists discussing the release of Tesla's new children's toy. Welcome back, everybody. Today's new story is on Tesla's new toy releasing soon, designed by children for children. Today, we'll discuss why this might be flying off the shelves this holiday season. Can't imagine how parents are going to get their hands on these products. I mean, regular toy cars are huge. Just imagine the quality of these. I'm just concerned about Tesla's past controversy and their involvement with child exploitation in their products. I think consumers are really overlooking this. Well, we can welcome a Tesla representative in today to give us all of the insider information on this new toy. We are so happy to have someone like this on the show today. Hi, welcome to the show. Can you give us all of the information you have on this hot new toy? Well, I think it's time to get excited. We are pumped to incorporate all of the power of our cars into children's drivable versions. We are creating children's drivable cars. We are flipping the drivable children's car industry upside down. So let us know, are we gonna be expecting something more powerful on the market? 
absolutely. We are using the same technology that we use in our cars, just in the small versions. The kids love building them. I mean, they're professionals. I don't think we could have done it without them. These cars are going to hit top speeds of 60 kilometers per hour with this first launch. And we have yearly software updates, um, but we don't really have time to confirm that right now. I'm sorry, say that again? The children are making the cars themselves or designed with the children's ideas? Who cares? The children are going to love this. I mean, the ergonomic design, the power of the Tesla engine. I can't even wait to get a hold of one. I mean, I can't even imagine how parents are going to love the fact that it is a long-term solution for short-term problems. We are proud to announce Tesla's new Support a Child initiative. We hire youth from all over the globe and give them a wage to help support their goals. Uh, we've started in low-income areas of Asia, and honestly, we are blowing our competitors away with our dollar-a-day salary. Wow, children building their future and innovations. Absolutely. Some of our children even prefer our Tesla snacks over their pay. They are just a shining example of workers who work for the joy of their customers. No way. So the children are building these products? Now isn't this an ethical issue? I mean, we're all hearing this. They're using the children to make these products. Children manufacturing cars, even on a small scale, is a moral issue. I don't think it's such a bad idea. Children have a wonderful way of being creative and just, I can't wait to see this. The Support a Child initiative is such a great idea and will change communities. I love knowing that my child will be safe in a car designed by children. Now we can't use children to build toy cars. This is just misleading the customer. Current social media excitement praises this product. Parents are setting up release parties. When can we expect this? Well, we can't give a release date yet as we don't have enough workers to release. Uh, however, Soon we will have these on the shelves and into the arms of our customers. I can't wait. Guys, are we not seeing this? Am I the only one? Thank you to our fantastic Tesla rep. Giving children the chance to make their mark on the world, we honestly can't thank you enough. Bettering the world one step at a time. Guys, guys, children can- We are sorry to cut the segment short, but we bring you a final update on our Bigfoot story. There has yet to be any other sightings of the elusive creature. Back on the scene to our reporter, Jackie. Hello, Aiden. So far, there have been no other sightings of this elusive creature. However, we did manage to capture a photograph from the hikers who claim to say that this is the Bigfoot that they did see. Remember, the public is advised not to approach this creature at any cost unless you have Swedish berries. Back to you, Aiden. That is all for today's afternoon report. Thank you for joining us on this lovely Wednesday afternoon.